Well, the world has seen and felt the shockwaves of a massive underwater volcano on the doorstep of the Pacific island of Tonga. It's triggered a tsunami that's engulfed the island nation, waves reaching as far as Australia and Alaska. Tonight, there are reports Tonga is struggling with toxic air and contaminated water. Communications are crippled, leaving relatives in Australia desperate for news. And there's a warning another eruption could happen at any time. Eddie Meyer begins our coverage. It's been described as the most violent eruption captured on satellite with the equivalent force of a magnitude 5.8 earthquake. At sea level, the eruption resembled a mushroom cloud, a mass of steam, ash and rock surging out of the ocean 20 kilometres into the air. Within 20 minutes, a rush of waves hit the tiny island nation. Startled locals rushed to find higher ground as water crashed its way through. A river flooding streets and buildings, including this church. Some were caught out by the rising tide. Panicked locals rushed to get to safety, jamming streets. This volcano erupted with a rude shock in the late afternoon local time. We're all standing up, my hand is shaking. What are we going to do? Can you guys hear that? It keeps, it keeps bursting. Hey, okay. See that? You guys see the smoke coming up? Massive. Eo, the volcano. It's the volcano. The explosions ever more insistent. Oh no. Can you guys hear that? Oh my gosh. Man, it's loud. It's shaking the island. Look at all that. That's all from the volcano. There it goes. Is your ears popping? Oh, milk. Oh, This desperate mum then rushes to gather her children. Everybody get up. Let's go. Just get up. Get up. Her anxiety rising with every passing second. The volcano is erupting. It keeps erupting. Get up. Let's go far from here. Others trying to stay calm as the volcano continued to make its presence felt long after the eruption subsided. So it's currently raining volcano rocks or ashes right now. Staying indoors because it's really bad out there on the streets. Mama, we are in trouble of that, of that. At the other end of that call before it cut out, Mele Sineva Kafusi, now worried about her sister, brother and nephew. We much stayed up all night. It was pretty anxious. Up to now, we haven't even heard anything from them. So um, we're all pretty worried and yeah, it's heartbreaking. Hinamoa Aholele was talking to her grandmother when she heard eruptions in the background. Just hearing her, just hearing her talk on the phone, how scared she yeah. was. And the, the big explosion. Mele Leapai hasn't seen her seven-year-old daughter in Tonga for three years because of COVID. She was trying to comfort her as ash and rocks rained down on the roof of her parents' car. I can hear... Sorry, I'm getting emotional. I could hear my seven-year-old in the background crying. And I said, what's happening? And mom, mom said, oh, she's crying because she's scared. The volcano erupted 65 kilometres north of the Tongan capital, Nuku'alofa, at 3.10pm yesterday afternoon, Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. And from this tiny speck in the Pacific Ocean, shockwaves across the globe. Tsunami warnings were issued for Pacific Islands including Fiji, Samoa, Hawaii and Norfolk and Lord Howe Islands, along with the Australian East Coast, Japan, the US and Canadian Pacific Coast. The impact stretched to New Zealand, Ecuador, Peru and Chile. The Bureau of Meteorology says those shockwaves travelled at more than 1,000 kilometres an hour, reaching almost 7,000 kilometres to Perth, with the sonic boom heard in Alaska, almost 10,000 kilometres away. 
In Peru, tsunami waves crash through a market, washing away stalls and goods. Sending panicked shoppers running in fear of what might come next. Tsunami sirens were heard in Ecuador. With good reason, fishing boats at sea riding rolling tsunami waves. In Chile too, sirens blared as swimmers left the beach because of a strong surge of water. The waves here reached as high as 1.4 metres. In Santa Cruz, California, the rising tide caused minor flooding, but plenty of warnings. Damage too to fishing boats, large and small, in Japan's south. A two metre tidal surge and large waves washing ashore sank a number of boats and damaged others at a marina in New Zealand's far north. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern in touch with her Pacific neighbours. Shops along the coast have been damaged and a significant clean-up will be needed. Nuku'alofa is covered in thick film of volcanic dust, but otherwise conditions are calm and stable. We've not yet received news from other coastal areas of Tongatapu or the outer islands yet. Everything in deeply religious Tonga is usually closed on Sundays, but the Prime Minister has declared stores and bakeries can open so people can get supplies. International phone lines largely remain cut, but power is slowly being restored. Australia plans to send a surveillance flight tomorrow morning to assess damage along with... We are preparing uh, for humanitarian assistance uh, for, through of a C-130 uh, flight that could be deployed uh, from Brisbane. Things like tarpaulins, uh, water, cooking equipment. It's a start and more will follow once communications are restored. So far there have been no reports of deaths or injuries in Tonga, but this was seven times more powerful than the eruption on December 20 last year. Eddie Meyer, Nine News. And this is breaking as we go to where these are pictures coming out of Tonga showing the extent of the damage from the volcanic eruption and tsunami. Roads are flooded, walls and fences have crumbled. At this point, there are no reports of deaths or injuries. Well, many Tongans have made their home among us. Others come for seasonal work. Their presence never more valued than now during COVID. The distance and the breakdown in communication systems has them desperately worried about families and friends back home. Was the blast that shattered the stillness of an island nation. But thousands of kilometres away, it's left a silence that's hard to bear. You feel so helpless, you can't do anything. Speaking to her sister, Lupita, late yesterday, 18-year-old Isabella Fennec in Newcastle. Too far away to help, but listening on as disaster struck. It was like really loud, All everything was shaking, it sounded like hail, but it was all just like the ash fallen rock from the volcano itself. And you could hear like massive explosions like they sounded like fireworks. I didn't sleep last night and I stayed up all night. In Sydney no word either from Reverend Marta Javier Helio's sister since yesterday. My sister's home is on the foreshore. I am certain that she is not there but hopefully have gone to higher ground. It's leaving messages in hope uh, that she will uh, pick up a bar of uh, internet. More than 30,000 Tongans live in Australia a worried community today gathered online to watch home broadcasts. Here COVID is limiting gatherings but they're keeping the faith. Just the thought of knowing how our families live in Tonga with so little to imagine what they are going through right now particularly during the night time we've had this whole prayer chain that's been going during the night because we know that when it's night time in Tonga, there's no light. There's going to be an, a need, a desperate need, urgent need for help from Australia and New Zealand. Our country is among Tonga's closest neighbours and even here on our packed beaches, the island disaster is being felt. The event triggering a tsunami warning right along Australia's east coast. The SES sounding the alarm at Bondi at 10.30 last night. Please get off. The beach. It doesn't look like the ocean is going to turn into a tsunami. I've got no idea. Today, the Nutrigrain Iron Series cancelled. As a public safety organisation, we've got a responsibility to the community and to our members to make sure we remain safe. This is way bigger than what the Ironman Series is. The National Nippers Carnival at Manly, a smaller event thanks to COVID. And this morning, 
landlocked. Beach events are still running, even though the, uh, the water is closed to all public. Maroubra, Coogee, Balmoral, people told East Coast beaches were off limits. But no major waves and from swimmers, no major reaction Sydney-wide. It's not too bad, it's not any bigger than... It's not, not, not like a tsunami day or anything. Crisis averted on our beaches, but for Tongan families, a desperate mission. No word from the cut-off nation. Their loved ones need supplies. We we'll welcome anybody to donate through to the Tonga Australia Chamber of Commerce. We'll be facilitating it. We have locations and factories where they can drop the goods off and we pack them for them. Our hearts are with our people in Tonga. Ruth Wynne williams Nine News. Also feeling the effects of the eruption is Fiji and its many remote islands. Some villages in the outer lying areas of the Pacific are underwater, with the eruption triggering huge tidal surges. A usually calming ocean view more ominous than ever. What just happened? Water coming into land. It's never happened before. Monster tidal surges in Fiji, a domino effect from the undersea eruption more than 800 kilometres away. Close enough to hear the danger coming. Yeah, like boom and boom and the people are assuming that it's like a, a warship going on. Australians holidaying in Suva also feeling the threat. We just kept on hearing just massive boom noises in, in the clouds uh, up until... Um, around 10.30 at night. In the firing line of the shaken seas, tiny island communities. The experience that we are having right now and see the waves that are coming in. Marina, look at this. Homes, businesses and resorts slowly going under, some families scrambling with water lapping more than 30 metres past the high tide mark. We really do have those fears for the safety of some of the people in the outer lying islands. This one is a big wave, man. Look at that. The high tide is so big that half of the property is underwater. Hospitals, even among those forced to evacuate to higher ground. We shifted all the patients up to Ratvino Secondary School, where it's uh, safer. The unfolding chaos put holidays to Fiji on hold today. Flights from Sydney cancelled this morning. Ah, oh, can Yeah, the tsunami kicked it all off. Because of the um, volcano, the ash, and the pilot couldn't fly. He wasn't comfortable to fly. More importantly, access to these island nations has been made near impossible for humanitarian aid. The ash cloud also affecting satellite communication, forcing teams to wait. Hopefully that New Zealand government flight can be enabled to take off um, in the coming hours or the coming day or so to do that reconnaissance, to be able to give us more data to go on than we have at the moment. Hayley Francis, Nine News. Sophie Upcroft is with me in the studio. Sophie, this is a significant geological event. Pete, volcanologists say this is the largest eruption in the Ring of Fire since 1991. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano is about 64 kilometres north of the Tongan capital. It has been active for years, but an explosion of this scale only happens here once every thousand years. The underwater explosion pushed a huge amount of material up out of the seabed, shifting the water above. The change in water levels created waves that radiated out in a ripple effect. In this case, felt across the whole Pacific Ocean, sending a column of pulverised rock, ash, sulfuric gas and steam up 20 kilometres into the air, developing into a plume 260 kilometres wide. We are likely to see a series of smaller eruptions next. It could be days to weeks to months. It's not clear. These ring of fire volcanoes in a way behave according to a pattern, but sometimes it's really quite individualistic. The eruption has resulted in Australia's highest tsunami waves in 60 years, our east coast recording between 80 centimetres and one metre. While this might not sound big, they do pack a punch. The waves are both longer in terms of the time between waves, so that's a longer period, and because of that, they carry a lot more energy. And so they have the potential to create a lot more damage. They're also able to push further up into our estuaries. A marine threat warning was issued from Fraser Island down to Tasmania. While the waves are getting smaller, this area has been reduced, but could be upgraded again if there are further eruptions. 
Sophie, thank you. Amber's with me in the studio as well. Amber, a tsunami warning remains in place along the New South Wales coast. Yes, Pete, good evening to you. Tsunami wave action is still being observed along parts of the east coast, so a warning will stay in place until there's been at least several hours without any activity. There's a hazardous surf warning in place from Byron Bay all the way down to the Illawarra with dangerous rips, waves and strong ocean currents. Right now, the swell is around 1.8 metres and that's producing waves of five to six foot plus. New South Wales beaches will remain closed until further notice. Due to the dangerous conditions, swimmers and surfers are being warned to stay clear. That big surf is expected to hang around all week. Pete? Amber, thank you.